In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of In Full Zoom. I'm pleased to welcome our guest this week. He is Consul Ferdinand Flores of the uh, Philippine Consulate General's Office here in Guam, and he's here to talk about overseas uh, registration for Filipino citizens. How uh, are Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mr. Nestor, and uh, half a day mabuhay. I'm uh, here at the Centro Rizal of the Philippine Consulate General in uh, Agana. All right, so uh, let's talk about the uh, overseas voting registration. I think you're going to be doing that over the next couple of weekends or so. Tell us about that. Correct. Uh, this is an activity for the first time in recent history. It was proposed by the consulate earlier this month, approved right away by the Department of Foreign Affairs and COMELEC. This is an effort to bring our service to the people on a very good day, which is Saturday, Saturday afternoon. You know, I, I like Saturdays. It's a fun day. It's a very relaxing day. And Filipinos like going to the mall. So why not just bring the service to the mall, capture the market there, we'll be given an area there. We'll, all of us will be there. We can do the overseas voter registration. And as you know, it will end uh, on September 30. And we're trying to do our best to bring the service closer to the people. So we're happy to do this. This is an approved activity. We'd like to uh, capture maybe 200 to 300 people. The first day would be on August 28th. It's a Saturday, 1 o'clock to 5 p.m. at the Center Court of Micronesia Mall. All right. And we should let people know that uh, the Philippine elections uh, will be held in uh, May of next year. But there will Correct. be early voting. And, of course, uh, what you're doing now is the early registration. Tell us a little bit about, um, you know, who's eligible and what documents, if any, they have to present, that sort of thing. Well, of course, number one, you're a Filipino citizen or you're a dual citizen or you're a dual minor, uh, dual and uh, Filipino citizen, but 18 years old at the time of the election next year. So that's May 9. All you have to bring is, of course, a copy of your Philippine passport and uh, fill up some forms and we'll do the rest. Okay. Um, what, what, how long do those forms take to fill out? Are they pretty simple or uh, is it's it a very one page thing. It's a one page engagement. So tick all the boxes uh, and uh, we'll take the, we'll do the rest. Okay. And so, but they, they do have to be registered in order to uh, vote the, the actual balloting. When will that take place? Well, uh, of, of course, abroad, our election is about a month. It begins one month before the actual day of election in the Philippines. So ours will be on April 9 to May 9, but the actual election in the Philippines is on May 9. So that's just one month ahead of the rest. So we'll, we'll be providing this service here in the consulate, or maybe we may be allowed to move around and uh, send the ballots uh, by email and collect them later on. Okay. Uh, talk a little bit about the uh, mail-in balloting. How does that work? Well, of course, it's a system that... Uh, more commonly used in the U.S. Basically, we send out uh, a ballot, a mailed ballot to a dedicated e address, residential address of the voter. And after he shades the right boxes, sends it back to us, we collect everything, and then we feed it to the machine. Okay. And will all those that are registered, that are registering, automatically get that ballot or they have to request for one? Well, it will be automatically done. So once you register, we get your, e your address, and if there's any change in address, let us know. You can contact us by phone, by email, or see us on Saturday. We can update your, your um, details there. And then, well, the, the, the thing that we would like to address also is that if you have changed your address, let us know it right away. So we don't spoil and we don't waste any ballot. A lot of the uh, Filipino citizens that are on Guam currently are, um, a lot of them are um, overseas uh, foreign workers or H2B um, workers. Um, have you been reaching out to those uh, communities and how have you been doing so? Well, we are. We are doing that. But uh, most of the time, before they leave Manila, the, at least the practice before, is that they got registered already. But here, if they have the time and they come to us, we open our doors, we register them here. Or if they can come on Saturday, that would be very good also for them. Okay. And this election, most people think of it, know of it as, you know, the presidential election. Um, but it's also a, a general election nationwide, right? Can you vote uh, on Guam for your uh, provincial leaders, um, your town leadership? Um, who, who can they vote for from okay. here? If you're in Guam, 
you can vote for the president, the vice president, the senators, and one party list representative. But if you're in the Philippines, you can vote uh, the same number of people plus your local town or city councilors. Okay, so, so but if they're here, then, then they, they cannot vote for those, those local, yeah. local correct, positions. Correct. Okay, that's, that might be important. Is there any way for them to, um, do they have to vote um, here at the consulate or can they mail their ballots, say, to their hometown in the Philippines that will enable them to vote for a, a provincial um, leader? Or well, it works this way. Overseas voter is basically a ballot indicating the number of people you can vote, and then you give it back to us. But you cannot send it to the Philippines because the okay. Philippines is a different system altogether. The, the, at least there in the Philippines, it's a personal voting system. You go to a precinct, and then they give you a ballot, you know, just like before in the past. Yeah, they give you a ballot, you shade, and then you feed it to the machine. You do it all, all by yourself with just people manning the percent. But here, by mail, because of the size of the, of the United States. Also, right. uh, this is a system that is in place for most U.S. Uh, posts of the Philippines. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. So there's no such thing as, like, say, an absentee ballot for them for their local elections? Uh, no, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> That's All right. Just wanted, yeah. just wanted to make that clear. But 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 this is a very important um, national election, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yes. What are yes. what are the um, the challenges that the next president are going to face? I can think of, of two in particular. Um, you know, addressing the pandemic and the economic uh, recovery post pandemic. Can you elaborate on that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, you're very correct. You know, the pandemic might not end very soon and the after effects will be felt for some time later in the future. So the next president will be will have to manage this at the same time, pave the way for economic recovery at the same time, garner political capital on things uh, which will be very important for the Philippines in the near future. Yeah. Um, can you um, talk a little bit about um, the potential candidates? I know one lost a boxing uh, <laughs> match the other, the other day. Um, this Manny Pacquiao, because uh, his name has come up um, in, in the Philippine true. media as a potential candidate. And, and I, I imagine that there are uh, several, if not many others. Well, Nasser, your guess is as good as mine. And, you know, the, if there's someone out there who'd like to run for the president, for president, at least in the Philippines, he has a lot of serious thinking to do. And if money, Mr. Manny Pacquiao would like to do it, dip his fingers, dip his toes. It's really up to him. But I think he's going to make an announcement very soon. Yeah, that's uh, that's what we're uh, we're seeing in the media. And, and, and you know, I, I didn't want to put you on the spot there because you are, of course, a, a governor, <laughs> a, a government employee, if not a, a foreign a Department of foreign, foreign Affairs employee. So I know that you're limited in those sorts of uh, statements. Sure, sure. We're always critical about, about these things. You know, we're always sure. uh, interested with witnesses to this uh, uh, event. We sure, provide yeah. the opportunity for the election. Uh, we, of course, we don't talk about who's running and, uh, you know, it's all their ball game. Yeah. Um, you know, I, we, we talked a little bit about the uh, economic recovery. Um, well, it, it, from your perspective, um, you know, uh, how, how long will it take, do you think, for the Philippines to recover? Because that, you know, short of the pandemic, that is probably the main, the biggest concern of, of everybody. And, and there's a lot of people in the country that are suffering right now, a lot of unemployment, uh, yeah. a lot of um, you know, uh, food shortage, that sort of thing. Um, talk about what your your insight is into in, into what uh, how long the economic recovery might take. Well, you know, the first question that we need to answer is uh, attaining uh, some some level of herd immunity, a level where people are going to be comfortable to go out. It's just not a matter of government putting restrictions in place; people will not go out. Now, even my family members are afraid to go out. So it, we, might, we must have that level, attain that level of comfort, convenience, and safety that people can go out, resume their work, resume their lives, embrace the new normal, get back to work. You know, I come from a working family. So even my family members are, are raring to go back to work, earn again, support the family again. And whenever I see uh, pictures of 
of uh, working working people in the Philippines, braving the odds, beating the odds, going out to the streets and trying to do their best to earn to earn a living, to put food on the table. That's actually a very powerful image that the country needs to go back. Maybe embrace the new normal, but we have to go back to work, support the economy, rebuild it if need if needed. Yeah, and and not just uh, the domestic the domestic economy. I mean, you know, the Philippines is driven in great part by the uh, remittances of overseas right. foreign workers. Um, what's what's the status of that now? Have there been a lot of uh, OFWs that that we call them that have repatriated back to the Philippines and are looking to get back out to other countries? To, to return to work? Uh, what's the situation? Well, we, we are repatriating our workers, those who at least uh, want to be repatriated back to the country. It's an ongoing uh, activity, especially in the Middle East where I came from. So since the start of the pandemic, we've been sending them back home. But of course, be, before they even leave the country of work, they would always tell us, you know, I also want to go back. Maybe not the same country, but go to another country and support my family. You know, I'm not just feeding myself. I'm feeding my entire family. I'm sending people to school, children, my sister's children. And the uh, remittance is just one thing of those things that we need to, hand, uh, to, to manage. But it's that feeling that you need to go work and support the entire family more, more than yeah. the remittance itself. What is the, policy, the current policy of the uh, Department of uh, Foreign Affairs, the DFA, um, with regard to um, visas for outbound um, OFWs? Well, of course, number one, if you are in the Philippines and you have a valid work visa overseas employment certificate, you can leave the country. There was a time that there was some uh, news of us not allowing them. But then again, this has been clarified by the government. If you have a work permit, you can leave. Even sometime, even at some point, they even allowed tourists to leave the Philippines. Filipinos leaving the Philippines and going out. But then again, we've never really stopped fully the deployment of workers outside the country. Yeah, and, and you of course deal with a lot of the um, H2B workers here in Guam. What are the mm-hmm. most common things that you, you deal with them about? Well, they're happy to be here. To be completely honest about it, they're happy to be in Guam. It's like a small family here. It's like you never left the Philippines. Everyone is here and everybody speaks the language. And uh, we recently had a, a post-arrival orientation seminar here co-hosted with the Philippine Overseas Labor Office in LA. And we told them, you know, you are safe here in Guam, not like in other areas. Your rights as a worker are protected here. The government works here. We are here for you. For all other labor matters, we have the polo in LA. For non-labor matters, you have the consulate. So it's like a one small family here. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. Yeah, I wanted to get back to the uh, COVID situation in the Philippines. You mm-hmm. were uh, talking a little bit about um, achieving herd immunity. How far away from that are we? I know that um, uh, Metro Manila NCR uh, just this week uh, got out of uh, another uh, Mm -hmm. ECQ situation. Um, It seems to be going like back and forth, back and forth. Um, Talk a little bit more about uh, the situation there, particularly in the uh, Metro Manila uh, NCR uh, area. Well, of course, Metro Manila is a... The, the flagship place of the country. Uh, it's under MECQ. Some people are, get, are getting confused with the MECQ, the GCQ, and all of these. Too much CQ, alphabet soup. With too much <laughs> alphabet soup. But basically, it means that there is a variation of uh, mobility restrictions. At the same time, some areas might be uh, imposing stricter uh, rules for the community. Some may allow travel. Some may allow only those with essential work or essential travel. But in the Philippines, we have at least as of this day, we have 42.5 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines. We have Sputnik V, Moderna, Pfizer, Janssen, AstraZeneca, Sinovac. We are also expecting Sinopharm arriving in two tranches. And uh, so far, we have uh, uh, distributed 91% of the total doses uh, all over the country. And uh, we have 20, uh, 12%, uh, we have, 
given administered 28.6 million doses as of August 11, and our seven-day average is uh, 448,000 doses, seven-day average. So we're doing it all over the country. Even my family members are waiting for their turn to be vaccinated. But uh, in some areas, of course, it's, it's a little bit more aggressive, the vaccination. Yeah. Are there issues with the vaccination, though? I mean, there's a, a, a segment of the community here on Guam even that are, you know, apprehensive about vaccinations. And, you know, in the Philippines, I know um, the Internet is abuzz with all of these um, theories of why, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the vaccinations are dangerous. Can I talk about a little bit about the, those sorts of issues? Well, in the Philippines, there are also things like this going around, you know, but uh, at least what I know of, some people might choose a different brand for a vaccine and they're waiting for that to be rolled out in their community. But the, the, the best advice available now is the best vaccine is the one inside your arm. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you don't see that as a, maybe a hindrance to achieving herd immunity, any vaccine reluctance? Well, it's not that they don't want to get vaccinated. It's that they're trying to choose which one they prefer, maybe because of their friends or because of their pe people abroad. But uh, it's just a matter of educating the public. You know, Vaccination is important. Maybe it's a matter of choice whether you want to be vaccinated or not. But for, for your family's sake, please choose the one available to you nearest. Okay, and the big question here in Guam is uh, when can... Uh... Guam residents, Guamanians travel back to the Philippines to visit their family, friends, business associates, uh, go golfing, go, uh, you know, shopping, uh, pamper themselves. When is that going to happen, Ferdy? You know, Nestor, we've been uh, outside the country for two years now. I've been out of the country since the beginning of the pandemic. I'd love to answer that question, you know. But if you have a family member in the Philippines, and I'm talking about a spouse, a uh, legally married spouse, of course, and you are a U.S. passport holder, you can go to the Philippines without a visa. But uh, if you are going to the Philippines, uh, if you're going to the Philippines with your spouse, I mean, you can go to the Philippines without a visa. But if you have a wife there or a minor Filipino son, then come to us, we'll issue you the visa. But uh, for the crucial message here is essential travel. If your travel is very crucial, if, say, for example, you're trying to get medical services in the Philippines, of course, there's a mechanism there. It's a medical referral system through two offices, very popular here in Guam. Now, if you are married to a Filipino national, of course, guaranteed. With a minor Filipino son, guaranteed. But all other matters, we can talk about it here. We usually uh, counsel uh, visa applicants in the, here in the, in the consulate, depending on their circumstance. Yeah, but so the what, what, message here is essential travel. Yeah, and can you talk a little bit more about what those exemptions are? I mean, uh, for example, I, I imagine that if it's um, a, a, a complicated surgery, that that would be uh, um, more likely to be approved as opposed to uh, an elective surgery. You know, what what are the? Uh... Well, if you, we have not we have not encountered a denial of a medical referral so far, so if you come to us with a medical issue, of course, we will counsel you on your two options, how you want to do it and with whom you want to do it with. So if you go to the Philippines and you seek medical attention, that medical referral system provider, can I mention the two names here? Can I mention sure, the two absolutely. names here? It's the yeah. TMC and the PhilMD. If you do it through those two offices, of course, they will do the paperwork in the Philippines, do the bubble, do the quarantine in the, in the hospital upon your arrival, they call it a bubble, and then they come to us, we notify them that the, 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 approved, the visa has been approved, we will issue the visa, then they will assist the patients going to the Philippines. So, so far, we have not encountered any denial of this application. Which is actually about, very, um, yeah, sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Which is actually very good. You know, people need this service. This pandemic has been extra difficult for all of us, especially those who are in need of constant medical attention or confinement in this case, or maybe an ordinary medical checkup, an executive checkup or dental service. So this, this, this facility should always remain open, in my opinion. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's. We offer affordable rates, online payments, and auto bill pay for your convenience. Plus, gate access daily from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E. 
How about um, Filipino citizens coming to Guam and American expats who might want to come to Guam to avail of the uh, vaccinations here? I'm oh, sure you're familiar with okay. the Air, Airbnb program that the Guam Visitors Bureau has launched. We're very happy to actually to, to be invited by the GVB regarding this matter. And we've had many cases of Filipino families coming from the Philippines or expats in the Philippines coming to Guam for the vaccination. Of course, once they come here, before they come here, they have to have a visa, a valid visa for Filipino citizens. Then once they get the, the, their business done here, they can go back to the Philippines, but they just have to contend with the quarantine in Manila, the 10-day quarantine in Manila. But we always advise them before they even come here. Yeah, even as we speak, so the, the, tell us a little bit about the, the inbound um, process. Um, you mentioned the 10-day quarantine. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit more about that. So if you're traveling to the Philippines with or without the visa, Filipino worker or an expat or a US, a U.S. citizen, you have to contend with quarantine. It cannot be removed. It cannot be, you cannot be exempted from it. It's mandated by the government. So if you are a Filipino worker arriving in the Philippines, the quarantine facility will be managed, will be handled by the Overseas Welfare uh, Administration or OWA there in Manila. But if you are a foreigner going to the Philippines, you have to do it on your own, pay for everything, book it before you fly out. Of course, the airline will be checking these things before you before they issue the ticket. And then uh, once in the Philippines, you have to pay for your uh, swab uh, testing on the seventh day upon arrival. Yeah. And, and so is there uh, are government uh, specifically approved um, hotels that you have to stay at? Yes, correct. The Department of Health has this list of approved uh, quarantine facilities. But let me just go back to the medical referral system. If you choose to be confined in a hospital, the medical referral system provider will can, can provide this uh, arrangement for you, which means upon arrival in the airport, uh, a, a transportation service will be ready for you, bring you to the hospital, do your quarantine there. Also, your medical services will be done there, after which you'll be brought back to the airport for your departure. So okay. It's easier, actually, for medical patients. And you can't give me a date certain when, um, you know, travel to the Philippines will be open? Come on, Freddie. For all? <laughs> you can't for give all? me a date, a, a date certain? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. Well... <laughs> I hope it can be tomorrow, but then again, you know, with the situation now in the Philippines and all over the world, it will not be very easy. It will not be very quick, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, will it will it take another year, another couple of years? What do you think? I mean, you know, we're all praying you know? by January we can go home. Really? We spend the, new, the first week of January there. Start of the new start of the new year. Start fresh. Meet our family members meet our remaining family friends you know it's it's when we talk about covid death it's a number it's a, it's a statistic but if you happen to have family friends who died of this this problem this figure becomes very very uh blatant it's uh it's not just a figure it's a face it's a face of a person who died and it's a family member or a family friend so We'd like to go back at least, meet them, take care of them, or at least pay our last respects if they are suffering or they have, or they have suffered from this. Yeah, January, huh? that's the most optimistic uh, prediction. I hope ever. so. I hope so. <laughs> I hope All so. right, uh, we've, got a, we've got a couple of minutes left, Rudy. I wanted to circle back to the purpose of this whole interview, which is the uh, voter registration. Once more, um, invite um, the Filipino citizens here to, to avail of that. Thank you, Nestor, again for this opportunity to talk to our viewers here on Guam, Filipinos especially. So if you are a Filipino citizen, a dual citizen, or a minor Filipino citizen, but turning 18 on May 9 next year, please come and see us. It's a mall. It's a very friendly place. Saturday is a very relaxed day. We'll have two Saturdays then, August 28th and September 25th. That uh, two, two Saturdays uh, hosted by the Micronesia Mall. So thank you, Micronesia Mall, for hosting us. And uh, the last day of registration is 30 September. But don't wait for the last day, please. Come and see us. Consulate or the mall, call us. We'll be happy to, ho to have you here. All right. Thank you very much. Consul Ferdinand Flores with the Philippine Consulate General Office on Guam. Thank you for joining us, Ferdy. Welcome. I'm happy to be here. All right, I'm Nestor Lecanto. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week on In Full Zoom. Thank you.
In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprises, Inc. and IT&E.